In Hungary, on most of the streets, wearing a mask is mandatory. Also on public transport, in taxis, in waiting rooms, in shops and so on. Restaurants, cafes, bars and clubs are closed. Shops, shopping malls and hairdressers can be open but must close at 7 p.m. Also, there's a curfew between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. There's a general ban on events and uh, higher education has also gone online. Budapest Airport is open, but hotels can only receive guests traveling for business purposes, not for tourism. Currently in Greece, the use of a mask is mandatory in all indoor and outdoor areas. If the police find someone without a mask, they will impose a fine of 300 euros. Schools are also closed, but before shutting down for the second time, wearing a mask was mandatory for students and teachers. However, it's not compulsory for those who are riding a bike or doing sports. Now, if you are driving alone or with your family, then no mask is needed. In all other cases, the driver and passengers must wear a mask. Belgium is among the countries with the highest number of COVID-19 deaths per head of population in the world. And this is why the rules concerning the mask wearing have tightened up in the last months. Since November, wearing a mask is compulsory for all people over 12 in private or public places with high concentration of people or when it is not possible to respect social distance. In October, the government was heavily criticized for setting up a very complicated system system that obliged people to wear a mask only in certain streets of Brussels. But then, with the second wave hitting all the continent, the Belgian authorities have reintroduced tougher rules, which include a fine up to 250 euros if you are not wearing a mask. Here in Stockholm, this is one of the places where it's now become a recommendation to wear a face mask when traveling on public transport during peak hours. That's between 7 and 9 in the morning and between 4 and 6 in the afternoon. Still though, it's just a recommendation and only if you're traveling on public transport where you can't actually book a seat and by that maintaining social distance. This is now a recommendation for anyone who's born in 2004 and earlier. Uh, but there's been a lot of criticism here that this is only a recommendation, nothing mandatory about the use of face masks so far. Now I'm standing here with Christopher Thompson, who's the regional minister for transport here in the Stockholm region. Christopher Thompson, you've been a, a, a heavy advocate for the use of face masks on public transport uh, for months now. And today, this is the start of the recommendation for face masks. What's your thoughts today? Well, it's. You, you might, of course, want to think about in terms of victories, but I think that victories are a very bad word to use in terms of a pandemic where people are suffering and where people also have lost their lives. But I think that it is a very good step for Sweden to take to admit that there has been one tool that has not been used uh, when it comes to battle the pandemic, and that is the use of face masks, uh, and that we have now brought in this recommendation and are of course now being one part of the expertise in the in, in a, in a global context and of course the expertise in a European context but also Nordic context I think is something very wise uh, from the Swedish National Health Agency to do and I think this of course will be something that will help us even more uh, fight the pandemic of course it will not it will not it will not be something that will uh, replace other requirements or regulations uh, in society. It will not be something that will replace the need for a uh, forceful vaccination program, but it will be one more tool in the toolbox, and that is important. Right, but you've wanted this now for months. Is it too late, do you think? We're seeing the, the, the virus spreading rapidly throughout the Swedish society. Well, better late than sorry, but of course we have been, a, I would say, a huge number of people in Sweden who have thought that this very odd position of Sweden where we have not acknowledged the international expertise from WHO and other institutions, we have not acknowledged the expertise in Swedish context either, has of course been something very unwise and something that of course has meant that we have, I would say, not been able to tackle the virus and the pandemic as good as we otherwise should have. Now, you've obviously been in touch with other European capitals, your colleagues throughout Europe who've had face masks on their public transports for months during this pandemic. What's the difference between Sweden and, say, a city like Madrid? Well, it, of course, a recommendation or a requirement, that is, of course, something that differs from one country or one, perhaps, city from, uh, to another. But I would say that the very, the very 
position that has been odd in Sweden is that we have not acknowledged the use of face masks at all. But now we are doing that. We are actually acknowledging that they can make a difference. They can make a difference when it comes to making or caring for others and protecting others when it comes if you if you have the the virus yourself and i think that is important of course that we use all the tools that we have and this is a tool that we haven't used so i would say that it's it's a good step forward when it comes to the swedish strategy that has been in very many ways of course something that has not been so adjusted to international expertise and to the other parts of europe or the other parts of the world Christopher Thompson there, who's the Regional Minister for Transport here in Stockholm. And uh, I've been standing here now for quite some time. I haven't really seen that many people using these face masks yet, but it is still just a recommendation. If you're not wearing one, you can actually still, though, travel on public transport, Ollie.